<laughs> All right, there we go. Hi, it's the Athlete Podcast, and Anthony Kassar is here. He's an NCAA champion. Ooh, big deal. <laughs> He's also going to be fighting somebody eventually, but we don't know who. Hopefully. Um, hey, how are you? I'm doing great. Happy to be on here. It's been a minute since we talked, so excited to catch up. It's good. You're skinnier than a hipster's jeans. I am. I really yeah. am. My six pack back. It's weird. Yeah. You don't look as Greek. <laughs> <laughs> you don't got like a fluffy face. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm more back to the Italian side now. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's let's talk about the weight, man. Because yeah. you know, but the when. When you and I were working together, it was about getting weight on and getting it on fast. Mm -hmm. And you seem to like that. Yep. <laughs> you know, something told me you wouldn't <laughs> like the other way. Uh, yeah. What was what went into the decision to to go down to two hundred five and and what was it like? Yeah, I mean, uh, bulking up fits my personality well. A lot of people. Um, like the idea of it but can't execute it because it, they don't realize how much effort it takes i always say bulking up takes more effort but is a little more fun and enjoyable and then cutting weight you can you know not think about food for four or five hours and it's good so um, a little less effort but a little more uh you know discipline and tougher on, on the uh, uh on the spirit so um the decision to go 205 this time is you know, I'm always kind of in the middle with with uh, wrestling the weight class from 197 to 285. Mm -hmm. uh, made that jump, and then now with MMA, the weight class is 205, and the next the next one is 265. Um, so it was a, a bunch of reasons that went into it. One, you know, with my shoulder and body, uh, just it felt a lot better to get some mass off of me and, and take some stress off of it. And then also with the MMA weight cut, it's a lot different, you know, instead of making the weight and then competing an hour later, we have a day and a half, you know, almost 36 hours to make the weight and then and then compete. So it just makes sense for where I'm at right now to, you know, dominate this weight class and then eventually go back up. Mm. Um, uh, uh, give it a percentage. What percentage did the shoulder play into the weight cut? Like going down to 205? I would say probably about 40, 50. Yeah. Yeah. Just because, you know, I'm able to spend way, way less time in the weight room, uh, less time force feeding and like keep carrying that. You, you, you carry like a 20, 30 pound vest at all times when you're, when you're bulking up. So uh, I already feel a lot less stress, you know, on the body as a whole. Yeah. You know what it is though? Something tells me that like training lighter, yeah. is, like meaning wrestling lighter, you know, in, in the room, grappling lighter in the room probably has some benefits to it too. Have you found any of that? For sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not having to go with 300 pound dudes every day. So <laughs> I can, uh, <laughs> upside. I can go back to, you know, rolling with Bo and those kind of guys like uh, on a daily basis. And so, yeah, the training is a big part of it, too. The stress of that and um, not feeling that that extra weight on every motion that I do with me and with my training partners is is uh, super beneficial. Keep going, Mike. I'm uh, still formulating some questions over here. Oh, OK, no problem. Um, so tell me what it was like though like how what were you at at your peak 250 was the biggest i got so 45 pounds off of a i mean you know i busted your chops about mm -hmm. the greek and having a fluffy fit but you weren't fat dude mm -hmm. like you know i'd tell you if you were yeah <laughs> I know. i'm sure i'd be the first one to tell you yeah. um but what was it like okay so all right let's cut out sugar let's cut out the like you know what i mean like what what was like what was the process like yeah i mean honestly my diet isn't too different um it's just the quantity so the reason why i was able to get up to a solid 240 and not really lose much of my conditioning or um movement was because 
I did it correctly. And that's all tribute to Coach Kyle at the training lab and just being able to trust him and what he what he told me to do in, in terms of diet and lifting and supplements and all that. So you see a lot of guys move up in weight and not really have too much success, particularly if it's like from a light, light heavy weight to heavy weight, 197 to uh, 285 because they lose all their discipline and they just start eating everything. And at first that's okay for like a short period of time to build the frame, but then you really got to dial it back in. And so um, coming back down in 205 is just really more about quantity decrease and, um, and, and increase in the, uh, the training, you know, doing more like uh, low base endurance workouts and adding in some more sessions and the MMA training actually is easier because it's just it's a lot there's a lot to learn so we're, i'm training more throughout each day and so my calorie uh expenditure is like way higher so even that factored in as well um so yeah this started the weight cut about two just below 230 and then uh in about a week got down to 206 so and then was back up to 225 that night yeah, they're good. That the rehab—that's the other thing that people don't recognize—is like, I think just about just about every person that grew up wrestling could take that twenty pounds off of them. Mm -hmm. But getting it back on, getting it back on safely, getting it back on intelligently, and getting it back on so that you can compete in the time frame in which you're supposed to compete in. Yeah. Well, now that's a different story. And um, I know that a lot of places and, and Coach Cal has talked with Coach Myers out here and it looks like we're going to start working with them as well. We, uh, yeah, it's a, it's it's a different world. You know, yeah. it's like these guys got it dialed in like. Whoops. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's a story for another time. And I know a lot of places, not just the training lab, but like Dolce and all those guys, they, they're fairly secretive about their rehydration process and everyone kind of think, but it's not, it's not rocket science, right? I mean, like if you're, if you're looking at it as an objective, intelligent person, that's, that's put some thought into the sport, it's really not hard to figure out. We need electrolytes. We need water. We need sodium. We need potassium. And we can't have it all at once because it's all going to spill over, mm -hmm. right? Or you can't just flood. You can't drink a gallon of water in one shot because it's mm -hmm. just going to spill over. You're going to be sitting on the bowl for an hour and a half. Yeah. So what was – I know you didn't get to compete this time. Mm -hmm. With the, the rehydration process that you went through, did you put yourself through something 36 hours later? Yeah something yeah. rigorous yeah what yeah i got i got a hard blow in um the same time i would fight what way way harder than what my fight would have been so it actually probably was better for my first time um uh, you know like a 30 minute increase of uh of tempo and and uh each like five minutes or so and just kind of blew, blew my lungs out and um that gave me a good sense of like what what my feeling would be uh on fight night and uh yeah i mean it's all important that 36 hours like you said you can't just um you know no no holds bar it's got to be, be the same kind of discipline that, that that week led up to and make sure your body's uh readjusting back to to life and then um you know get ready to go that night so uh, it was really important for me to feel that exhaustion back up at my normal weight even though i was 20 pounds less than the day before have you always had a a coach to help you with your your weight management either putting on weight i know that you mentioned you're working with a uh, uh, training lab now but when you're putting on weight is that something that you you also had luxury of yeah thankfully um i was kind of figuring out on my own up until that my last year 197 in college uh which was was getting pretty tough and uh and then when i decided to go up the following year um that span of that cutting to bulking was when we really started working with training lab and he kind of um i think they saw it as an exciting project because i was doing you know doing both and i had the uh, the ability to to be successful at both weight classes and um that's when i really started and then each each year i've gotten closer and closer with coach cal and the team and just learn more and um 
you know, now I feel like I have a good grasp of of doing both. How big of a difference would you say the the you know science backing that you get from them uh, impacts your ability to perform? It's huge. I mean, it, it's it's always a blessing to have a coach like Coach um, Coach Mike in, in uh, high school and Coach Kale and other guys at Penn State in college and now Coach Cal with my nutrition and and uh, and strength training. It's like it's such a blessing to have coaches that you can fully trust because then you're not second guessing everything. It's like it's not it's not fun to to be up at night thinking if you're doing everything that you can uh, to be successful. So to have guys that you know are setting you up to to be the best that you can be is is huge and i've been blessed with that um you know most of my career and especially with with strength training and nutrition there's so much out there um that you can really get lost and so to be able to have not just the program of, of training lab but also the science and numbers that i can understand what we're going off of um it gives me a lot of peace dude that's crazy because you say peace and it doesn't feel that way to me Mm -hmm. and, and I get I and I understand why it would give you peace but as a coach it it, it is exhausting yeah because it's, it's this whole other man it's hard to explain like I think of wrestling as like a pie chart right and and I think of it as like okay if I'm building, I, uh, I, I don't know, there's probably like video games like this, right? Where you can like, all right, I want this guy to have level three speed, but he's going to have level eight strength and he's going to have, you know, the, and then there's like the mental capacity, right? So like, we're always building towards tens and everything, right? Yeah. But what happens when, I, and maybe it's just me and maybe it's cause I, I throw so much of myself into this crap, right? It's that. <laughs> When, when I say, okay, optimal performance, I don't know that I really even knew what that was. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really, you know, they're going to have sleep monitors on our kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing, like sleep monitors and, you know, he can tell like, Hey, your, your insulin spiking at 2 PM. Are you? dipping into some sugar like what do we do? Like, yeah. holy cow, dude like that's i gotta watch their sugar intake at yeah. lunch time now you know yes that's the answer is yes yeah because if you want to do it if you're gonna spend it and you're gonna do it well we gotta do it yeah and it's exhausting for my I know. I, know. I just want to teach i crotches and kassar <laughs> I know that's always been <laughs> just want to shoot lefty high C's and have no job. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't work like that, dang it. I know, but that's what that's what honestly gives the athletes peace is the coaches are in turmoil. <laughs> like Whoa. you guys are the nice. ones that yeah. So I definitely see that. I mean, so it, it's someone's gotta make the sacrifice, right? So it's either going to be the athlete or the coach and so it's a credit to you guys and to have you know a team um or a small group where it's not all falling on you but um at the end of the day that's what you know makes coaches so essential is there's a reason why athletes can be at peace and that's all a testament to you guys and let's talk about that what is your process for and it's been a while since you've competed Mm -hmm. what is your process for peace going into uh, a competition because it's like you know there, there's a lot of chaos mm -hmm. you know and, and i'll never forget the first time i cornered someone in an mma fight it was at a new breed you know amateur fight mm -hmm. and I'll, but i'll never forget the sound of that pin lock and close on that cage door <laughs> It was just this guttural clink clink, and I'm like, oh shit, get him out of there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I, you know, it's because I love the kid and I didn't yeah. want to get hurt. But but there there has to be some piece in there in order to have some some real success. How what is your process for like like that for? Yeah, I mean with with wrestling, when I started having that piece and success, 
it was all due to my preparation. Um, when I started dialing every aspect of my life into into achieving my goals, um, so that I wasn't thinking about what I what I could have done better or what I didn't do or what I did do um, wrong throughout the, the the preparation. Once I really committed to doing every single little thing right, when competition day comes around, your mind can just be blank. Um, there's a, a, a parable. It's um, about sleeping when the wind blows. And that's that's kind of the feeling I get when I go to compete is, uh, you know, whatever win comes on on uh, competition day, I can just, you know, be at peace and and um, basically just sleep. And and I know that I'll, I'll fail to the level of my preparation and training and I don't have to to rise to any occasion. I'll just trust in that. I did everything I could to, to get there and the rest I'll, I'll give to God and trust in his in his uh, power for the results. And that's the best feeling the best feeling ever to have uh, when the moment comes and the worst feeling ever, which I've had, you know, sometimes growing up is um, second guessing yourself on that day. So the advice I I would give to to anyone um, coming up is dial in your preparation, be confident in it, do every little thing to the best of your ability and the best of your knowledge. And um, when the big moment comes, what else is there to think about? You did everything you could. How do you, how would you say that um, you kind of arrived at that that viewpoint of of starting to trust your competition? Was it kind of like you believed on a day to day basis you were putting in the work, or was there something else that went into like that trust into your your day to day? Yeah, I would say I had a kind of a realization uh, my sophomore year of college. Uh, it was like towards the end of my sophomore year, and I just like looked up one day and I realized. I was more than halfway through and I wasn't, you know, achieving my goals. And uh, that was kind of like a an epiphany for me. And I, I I checked in with everything I was doing in inside the room, in the weight room, nutrition wise, lifestyle wise, who I was hanging out with, what I was thinking, reading, like just every, everything that I was putting into my environment. Um, I just checked and I, you know, worked with my coaches and everyone around me and um, made sure that I changed all those things to reflect who I said I wanted to be and then started embracing that, that image. And the day that I, that I, I did that, it all started changing for me. And um, that's when I started having that peace and yeah, the success didn't come right away because you can't just, you know, flip a switch and, and it changed. But as that process started, to it develop, was pretty quick though. It was, yeah, it was pretty quick though, dude. Yeah. Like, like, and I, you know, I hate to interrupt you, but, from an outsider i remember talking to you mm-hmm. and, and and i remember it going oh something's changed mm-hmm. you know and 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 for a real good thing yeah um but you you obviously made a decision right mm-hmm. it, was, it was like okay i'm gonna live this lifestyle it's not just something i do i have to i have to really dial in every aspect of this of my life to kind of point in the direction of success for this one thing right now exactly. you know it's it's really hard right it's it's really hard because we like to tell each other and we like to tell kids and i and i'm guilty of this too and i'm guilty of this too we like to tell kids that you know wrestling is not who i am it is just something that i do but every but here i am just, saying that every aspect of my life is now pointed towards success in this one thing Mm -hmm. how do you separate the two how do you separate two this is me as a person but this is what every ounce of me has to go to right now yeah go ahead say it's a good question you know it's a good question you know it's great i I mean i'm trying to get it every week brother we (laughs) i'm uh I'm trying to think now because I think there was a, a lot of my career where it wasn't separate because like you said, like once you do make that decision and that's all you're really thinking about, you know, how can that not be? Um, and I would say probably honest, honestly, that was the majority of my identity up to winning nationals. And then there was a series of, which I thought were over, but a series of more setbacks after I reached the, the mountaintop. And I felt like that was, you know, looking back, that was God kind of knocking me back down 
to make even more adjustments and refocus my priorities. And that these last few years of, you know, more injury and, and getting back close to my goal and then getting knocked back down and, and uh, the craziness of just, uh, you know, COVID and, and all the ups, you know, the unknown and everything. I just feel like now I'm finally at a place to where my identity isn't in what I do. You know, the, the dedication and, and uh, focus is the same, but I feel a, just a step back removed from that identity. And I and because I've had these last couple of years to relate to people outside of, you know, when, when are you competing next or when uh, aren't freak athletes and have model good looks? Yeah, it's hard to relate. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's that's kind of probably probably back down to earth and um we so, can get to relate to us common folk that's my sweetie <laughs> <laughs> sorry go ahead yeah so it's it's definitely a balance like it's something that people got to be aware of and um it's you know if you can be aware of it and be sensitive to it without going through the extreme highs and extreme lows, more power to you. But for me, and hopefully people can take take that from me without having to go through it. But being at the super top to the to what feels like the super low, um, now I'm at a constant middle ground, and I don't really let myself get either way because I know at the end of the day, you know, I got people I love, I got my faith, I got the things that are like the most important that that I, I find my identity in now, and then off of that i want to be the best that i can be competitive wise what's the transition been like from being a successful wrestler to now transitioning to the mma world where you're maybe not at the top of the mountain anymore mm -hmm. yeah it's been uh luckily for me i've i've done that process many times um coach mike has helped me through that process with wrestling so I, I wasn't one of those kids. Can, can, we tell, can, we, can we tell the story of you not making the state tournament your junior year and going, well, this is for the birds. <laughs> and he just lived at my place for a full year. I couldn't get rid of his ass. I come in and he's just lifting. I'm like, uh, all right, I guess. And like, not a little bit. Like yeah. he went up a weight class, and so I see him deadlifting like every plate in the place. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you know we're wrestling today, right? And they <laughs> stay there till ten o'clock and break like break me, break like <laughs> physically break me to the point where I had. Do you remember the time you put that big dopey head into my collarbone and broke it? Yeah, I, I was doing a podcast a few months ago, and someone brought that up, and I was like, I never knew that I broke your collarbone. I, I remember. Oh, yeah. you that's it for today. I remember, I remember exactly how too. I had a two on one, and we we were working on two on one. Um, who was the kid from? Was it Boundbrook or Franklin that would give you fits every once in a while? Normandia. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. but he would take a two on one off. Or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm taking a two on one off. I'm like, well, just switch your head. And so like you would you would slam your head into my collarbone. It hurts so bad. I would call my wife on a water break going, you need to bring ice over here right now. Right now. This is miserable. This kid's trying to kill me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was a fun year. You uh I remember you would just set the phone up in the corner and we would just do like privates, but just wrestle live for an hour. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's well you you want first of all, I started drilling. Okay. It was just <laughs> slamming on my head. Okay. You can call what you want. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Ann. Um yeah, so what I was saying was I've experienced significant improvements and growth from starting to the bottom and working to the top in a relatively short amount of time. Um that most kids didn't get to experience. Like a lot of the guys that I'm surrounded with at Penn State, you know, they've been state champs since they were, you know, seven, eight years old. So um they have they, they they have an experience that uh that like rate of improvement that's just like a crazy uh crazy uh at a crazy rate if you want if you want to call it. and so for me starting back at ground zero to to learn mma and these other styles of combat 
Um, you know, I'm just going back to what I'm used to, what I did in, in high school and college. And, um, you know, I've learned how to do it more efficiently each time. And so this, this career, I'm really breaking the cycle of starting from, you know, getting beat up and working and taking the hero's journey of trying to, you know, really grind all the way to the top. Uh, because I, I feel like I don't have to do that anymore. I've, I've learned everything I, I could from those experiences. And now I have the wrestling advantage and I want, I want to start off like I did with my first fight and just, you know, dominate from the beginning. And um, that's what I feel like I'm doing. Um, what was the hardest thing? Was it striking? I mean, jujitsu seems pretty natural. Yeah, I guess natural is probably, um, you know, I guess, yeah, self, I guess intuitive, but whatever. But was striking the most difficult aspect of the of MMA to learn? Yeah, I'd say so. Just, um, you know, doing one, one, one thing for so long, you develop patterns and uh, body type and um, specific use of muscles. Like, you want to get into a wrestling stance, you want to, like, um, you know, strike in a certain way that doesn't make sense. So yeah, that, that's, that's, that's been the biggest learning curve, but now I feel like I have a good grasp of it and can uh, differentiate between the two. And I, uh, I love it. So I love, I love jitsu. I love striking. I love it all. So here's the, the interesting thing for me, right? I know you, I know you're a smart human being. I know you probably knew that striking would wind up being the the most difficult facet of the sport to learn hmm. how did you approach it did you did you write out a like okay i i if i'm gonna learn this i'm gonna do this i really have to hone in on a process what was that process of learning striking for mma like and and did you kind of write it out or or did someone help you with, with that yeah i mean i didn't really know where to start with it so i had to rely on, on my coaches and um you know thankfully we had a we have our teammate um moose is a national champ uh, boxer for penn state and so he's he's helped me out a lot just like with the specifics of boxing um and uh you know the timing the 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 technique this like all the little things that you know, I can come in, I, anyone can come in and, you know, throw a one, two and develop bad patterns. And most MMA guys that are wrestlers, you know, start that way and just, you know, start hitting pads and, and just, um, you know, incorporate that with the wrestling. But I really wanted to make sure that I don't come into it with, uh, many bad habits or at least as little as possible and eventually become super well-rounded. And, and so I can't do that unless I have the respect for each style to start off with. And so him, um, training out at ATT with Coach Mike Brown and all the all the coaches they have out there, um, and then we had um, some more some more striking coaches as well for ATT State College. So really, just trusting them and and soaking up as much as I can. And now I'm finally at the point where I can start like adding in some of my own style. But it's like um, Bruce Lee says, like at first you got to just soak up everything, take take what's useful, leave what's not, and then you can then you can add in your own. Personal. How long does that take? How, how it, like for a freak athlete with model good looks? How long does it take? Um, to be adequate. I mean, my first, I had my first fight um, twelve weeks after I really started focusing on it, and I felt adequate with my with my striking. Um, and then now I just finished up my second camp. You know, I feel even better. Uh, I'm not uh, not near the level that I want to be, obviously, but I at least know how to throw every punch. Um, and now it's more about like mixing them in efficiently and I feel like I have the base. So I'd say, you know, six months to a year to build that base. And then it's all improvement from there in terms of, uh, um, you know, higher level. It seems like, uh, with wrestling that, you know, lots of times there's your strategy that's going to go into, you know, how you, how you're successful. And I imagine the same is, is in the fight world. How do you start to form a, a new strategy and, and pull together all these different disciplines and, and put all that together with something that is so new. Yeah. I mean, like I said, at first it's, it's more just about learning the basics that there's not much, um, there's not much of your own strategy or thinking with it until you can confidently, um, perform the techniques. 
And thankfully with wrestling, like, you know, if anything goes bad, that's where my strategy comes in, you know, take him down, hold him down and figure it out from there. But um, once once I've, I feel like I've, I've built that foundation, which I just now feel like I, I have, um, now I can really focus more on the IQ and the thinking and, um, you know, not just trying to survive or build my conditioning out there. It's more about, okay, I'm going to strike here. I'm going to learn, man. I'm going to, then I'm going to use my wrestling. Then I'm going to use my jujitsu, um, and mix it all together. There was wrestlers have, to me, <clears throat> wrestlers have a really interesting journey through MMA. There are guys and I'm going to give you two polar opposites. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are guys like Ben who really never evolved as a striker, right? Mm -hmm. And I think he'd be the first one to tell you that. Yeah. Right. Like he didn't dive headlong into strike. So many different ways I could go with that. He <laughs> dove headlong into a knee, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> I'd say that in front of him too. All right. <laughs> he didn't dive headlong into. That was good. You might want to clip that out. Whoever's producing this might want to clip that out. That was good. And then you can beat me up if you want to. That was fine. <laughs> uh, um, but he didn't. He didn't dive into to striking as an art form. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then there's the Aaron Pico, and Aaron like neglected his wrestling background almost for a long time and only wanted to strike just to prove. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know because I don't know Aaron that well. Mm -hmm. But it looked like he just wanted to prove that he could he could throw hands mm -hmm. and wound up biting him in the butt every once in a while. So, where do you think you will fit in on that spectrum, right? It, game plan wise, going in because everybody's everybody's got a plan so they get punched in the mouth, right? But where do you find yourself right now in your career, right? Because Let's be honest, you're not fighting freak athletes with mm -hmm. model looks every single time out. It's just sometimes it's canned corn, and that's mm -hmm. okay, right? That's what it should be because if not, it winds up going the route of Brock Lesnar, mm -hmm. right? Brock Lesnar was thrown through the walls way too early, way mm -hmm. too early. Um, so where do you find yourself on that spectrum? Do you feel like you're going to stay more towards wrestling? Or you're going to have to prove, feel like you should prove yourself as a striker. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is I'm never going to abandon my wrestling. So I'm not going to, and, and I understand the temptation, right? Like I, I'm learning how to hit people now and it's really fun. And I want to like knock people out and get that highlight. So I can only imagine with guys like Pico who grew up and, you know, Golden Gloves uh, boxing champ and that has act, like real skills from when he was young. I can only imagine what that temptation is like because it is fun. It, it, like, you know, as men, we want to, uh, you know, feel that. And it's it's different than pinning someone. Um, but at the same time, my main goal is, is to win. And, uh, and, and along with that, I don't want to be on the other side of it, which is I don't want to be boring and just be one-dimensional and hold guys down. So I'm hoping and I'm training and preparing for the fact that I'll be somewhere in the middle where I'm, very well rounded. My striking is is um, you know high level, but it's never going to match my wrestling because um, I don't have 15 years to to develop it. But uh, overall, I'm going to be entertaining. I'm going to be humble in there. I'm going to be smart, and um, at the end of the day, I'll do what I need to do to to dominate and um, and win. How how seamless was the transition for you? I know we we spoke about this earlier, where you know you're wrestling in state college, now you just go across the road and start training over there. What is what has that transition been like? Yeah, it's been it's been awesome. We've been really fortunate because uh, when I decided I was going to fight, I I kind of knew since um, like late high school that I was going to end up transitioning after I saw like Cejudo and Cormier and the wrestlers dominate. Um, in MMA, I, I, it was something I could just see myself doing. And so once I made the decision after the 2020 um, Olympic year that I was going to make the transition, I didn't know if I was going to move to Florida, Cali. There was you know, a bunch of options of, of gyms to train at. But uh, thankfully, Bo and my management team and Dan Lambert at American Top Team, Coconut Creek, 
uh, came together and decided to, to put up an ATT in uh, State College. And uh, so that's been that's been great because we can, you know, stay training with the college team, with NLWC and, and have the, uh, the impact of the coaches and everything, all the resource, resources at Penn State and keep our, our wrestling super sharp. You know, that's another reason why guys start abandoning abandon their wrestling because it's it's hard to train. It's when you start training and striking in jiu jitsu, um, you know, you realize that wrestling is by far the most taxing and, and challenging. Um, so I get why why guys veer away from it. And um, and you know, thankfully being at Penn State, we won't have the the temptation to do that because we have to keep up um, you know, our level to keep those guys sharp and, and uh, still hang with them. So it's been great to go there. Go, I'm, we're, we're still in there every single day training and then um, training at American Top Team in the morning. So it's, the, it's really the best of both worlds. Fearful of anything in MMA? Because I look again, fearful. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. I, I stopped watching it a long time ago. I can't watch it. It's too many of my friends getting hurt. Yeah. You know? Getting um, soft stage. Yeah, I don't know, man. And I also didn't like the person that it turned <laughs> I was like on vacation and like one of my kid the kid uh, Alex Hernandez uh, mm -hmm. was training with me. And I was on vacation and he was fighting. He's like, oh, he, first of all, he's like, Do you want to come corner me? I'm like, No, absolutely not. <laughs> he's like, Why? I'm like, Because I don't like it. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm not good to you at all. Like, I'm not an MMA coach. I'm just a rest, dopey wrestling coach. Um, and, and, but I was, yeah, I was in a bar screaming at like, you know, six o'clock in the afternoon because he's on the undercard. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I doing? My daughter's looking at me like I'm a psychopath. <laughs> and I was like the only one in this bar in Orange Beach just fucking screaming my head off. And I just, yeah. but, but so is there anything that you're feel, fearful of? I mean, like the concussions, the head injuries? Um, not really. I, I haven't, I haven't really thought about it too much just because, um, you know, compared to like boxing or, football it's like it's it's so much less just because of the yeah the variety of of um styles and being being a wrestler you know the plan is to not get hit that much and um it's been doing okay for me so far and really it's the training that i, I got to be aware of because the fights if everything continues to go my way you know i'll be smart smart enough in there to where uh, i can you know have the ability to to bring it to to the mat when i want to um but yeah, it's something to be aware of in the train in training. You know, thankfully the guys that I'm with were not. You know, I've seen in other gyms. It's you know kind of crazy with, uh, you know, all 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 out sparring sessions. Um, you know, min minimal padding, and that's just that's kind of the more the old style and the old school, and that's why you, you didn't see a lot of like longevity with those guys. Um, and so I think staying at Penn State, bringing in the professionalism of everything that I was taught there into my training is huge. And that's why, that's why I don't um, fear too much. If I keep that circle around me and keep, you know, my close family and friends around me, I'm not, I'm not afraid that I'll be swayed, whether it's, you know, lifestyle wise, training wise, co competing. Um, I think, uh, I think I'll be just fine. How do you stay? Uh, I know that you mentioned that, you know, you're in, the Penn State room daily, you're, you know, training all of your different disciplines. How are you keeping your body healthy throughout this whole process? Obviously, wrestling in a college room can be very taxing on your body. You know, I can't imagine. How indeed, Anthony Kassar, how indeed? <laughs> um, it's a good question. It's something I have, I've focused a lot of energy on these last couple of years because I got hurt the last time in um, 2016, and then I had almost four years of you know basically full full health through through winning nationals and um and then got hurt again at the uh senior nationals and that kind of made me reevaluate things even more and dive even deeper into how i can because the, the main the main goal is to, is to be healthy right like if i'm not healthy i can't do any of it so um that's been my focus uh these last couple of years and i started working with um this this guy named Christopher Meyer, who uh, we brought into the pen, who Coach Kale brought into the Penn State room, and uh, 
he's been helping me a lot with removing the tension from my body um and uh guys like that that have a you know just another viewpoint of what i can do to to prevent these chronic injuries from happening i i really like take take a take a liking to and soak up as much as much knowledge as i can and so him along with you know coach cal my trainers um and just seeking out as much knowledge as i can on how to really have my body like me and not just run into the ground like kind of like the wrestling mentality i feel like i've made some big improvements with that and honestly since uh i devote i completely committed to mma which was august september of this year my body's never never felt better and uh so i definitely want to continue that what um let's go back to december 2019 mm -hmm. fort worth texas i was mad side mm -hmm. i knew right away it mm -hmm. was bad I was, uh, I was bummed out. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm, I, and you know me, I'm being pretty un, uh, understated. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what goes through your head? Like, so for those of you that don't know, you dropped in on a leg attack uh, against Don Bradley, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And he dropped all of Don Bradley on that shoulder. And it came out. It was gnarly. And it was gross. Yeah. And I was pretty upset. Yeah. Um, what goes through your head right then, a day later, a week later, and let's call it a month later? Yeah. To start, I remember walk. I remember walking out there and seeing you right before I got into the mat. Just gave you like a little head nod, and um, I remember just feel like. I can even like looking back at that moment, I kind of was like out of it. Um, I just like wasn't really wasn't really present. And that was like a, a few things that, you know, doing my reflection and, and work these these last couple of years of just real, realizing a couple of mistakes I made with just overtraining and, um, you know, putting on a little too much weight too fast and um, feel like I was chasing two you know, two rabbits with the coming back for the college year. And my, my main focus was the Olympics. And there's just a lot that that led into that tournament of me not feeling like myself and um then going out there and wrestling you know a big monster like don bradley it's not really smart to not be present and uh you know chasing that chasing him out of bounds and then relaxing and him throwing his weight on it it my, my shoulder actually just broke it didn't, it didn't even didn't even come out like the didn't it didn't dislocate the the, the um the bone just broke um so it was it was completely different than my previous injuries which was interesting but yeah immediately after i was just kind of like there's a picture of me even on the mat just my soul just kind of left my body like i had i could not comprehend that that just happened um you know coming from the mountaintop like i said and feeling like i was on my way to achieve that next goal uh it was all pointing towards becoming an olympic champ is what I, what i felt and I knew right away, like, okay, I'm like, that's, that's gone now just from one second of, of losing focus. And, um, that, that week, um, I would say I was still a little optimistic, hoping that I can do something to it, whatever I could to ha have it hold up through the trials. And, um, then shortly after, I got it checked out, decided I was going to do everything I could to to uh, force it through. And about a month later, um, re-injured it in practice. And that's that's when I um, realized, like, for sure, okay, I can't push this. And, um, and then it was kind of weird. Then it was, you know, my dream was dead. But then COVID hit, so everyone's dream was kind of dead. <laughs> so good. Yeah. If I can't have it, neither yeah. can I else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I got like more, I got re uh, filled with hope because I didn't know if they were going to push it back a year or two years. I was like, if they push it back, you know, two years, I'm for sure good. A year, I don't know what the extent of the injury. 
and it ended up you know being that year and then people were still all up in the air we didn't know exactly what was gonna happen so that definitely helped me out a lot because you know misery loves company so everyone was was all out of whack and um and then uh you know they rescheduled it and I, I couldn't i couldn't get it healthy in time so that was another another realization so it was like really frustrating because it was a lot of up and down in that year yeah. year like i kept holding on to that 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 vision just in case and so to ha it was like i not got knocked down like four different times it wasn't like all at once and that like really really messed me up and um and so what, I had feel, like? what did it feel like watching gable win it honestly <laughs> Like, I'm not. I'm not being a dick. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's kind of. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. I was happy for him, honestly. At the moment, you are lying. Wow, you are just looking down into the left, and you're just lying. Like right, like like I don't know you. Wow, that was good. No, go ahead, please. <laughs> so full of shit. I forgot uh, that video. Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> love to see it. <laughs> I I know you're halfway kidding. No, I was trying to I was trying to think of where I was at the moment because I remember I was like I had COVID bad. Um mm -hmm. I was at ATT Florida and it was like the first night that we got there and I woke up and I was like dying of COVID and not literally, but I, I was I shouldn't say that, but I, I was I was really the sick the sickest I've been in a while. Um just because I don't get sick much. And it was at that time that that the finals were on. So I literally like watched him win it with like a freaking 104 fever. And uh, so that kind of all added to it. Um, and I would say it part of me, part of me, like it was cool to see him and like, I've never had any ill will against him. I actually like yeah. enjoyed watching him um, like leading up. Has it, dude. Yeah. Everyone, everyone enjoys watching him, dude. Like he's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually like was a fan of of him, uh, like watching him up to our our matches. I was like, you know, this is gonna be a cool kid to like compete against. Like, I, I liked what he brought. I li I even liked his like enter entertainment side, which a lot of people like hated on. I was like, no, this is cool. Um, so and then him being an American and like the way he won, I was it, like, that all was like, all right, this is this is cool. But you know, I'd be lying if if that you know lasted a couple seconds, and then I'm sitting there with fever um you know com like completely removed from from that goal um and and so that you know that definitely hurt and i was uh i don't know how much i i processed it then but there was definitely you know some some work through and and um rebuilding of 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 what that dream meant to me and now i feel like i'm at a good place um with it and and how everything in my life has led me to a better bigger um uh just overall better version of myself and and i have that peace now that it's it's you know it all happened for a reason and and uh i at least don't have that i still have the opportunity to achieve my goal which you know from the jump was to become the best in the world and you know whether that's become an olympic champ or you know ufc champ and and uh, becoming the best best in the world at my craft that was always the motivation and so i still thankfully have the opportunity to achieve that so i don't feel that complete like i failed at, at at a goal specifically yeah i didn't get that that exact thing but if i still have the opportunity to become the best in the world at what i do um i see that as as a, as a success and still achieving my ultimate goal yeah, I, I had a hard time arguing with that, Ankasar. We're going to wrap it up right there. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, where can people get a hold of you if they want to? Yeah, just hit me up on uh, Instagram at AnthTheChampKasar, um, whatever you need. But I appreciate you guys having me on. It was fun to go down memory lane and and, uh, and uh, catch up with you all. So thanks a lot. All right, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Peace. Hey, bud. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yep. Good to go. All right.